Hey Lance Egan here with Flyfish Food. I want to show you one of my most effective streamers. This is the Black Poacher. It's small, it's dark, it's heavy, it's deadly. Fish love it. Check it out. Dude, that's a big brown bro. All right, let's get started tying the Black Poacher. To start with, I have a jig hook in the vise. This is a size 10. This one happens to be an Umpqua XC400. You could use your favorite size 10 jig hook or you can tie these in larger or smaller sizes too. I tie them down to 12s frequently and occasionally as small as a 14. Um, you can tie them much larger, sixes, eights, whatever you wanna do. This bead is a slotted tungsten bead in a 4.6 millimeter. That's for extra weight. We want the weight to get this fly down. Next up, we're gonna add some O2O lead wire. We're just gonna do a few wraps of that on the shank. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That should be enough. And then I'm going to slide the weight back a little bit. I'm going to take some Z Mint, just some brush on super glue, and just touch it here behind the bead to try and help seal it in. Then I'm going to push it up into the slot and try and force it into the back end of that bead, like so. Then we can just break off the excess. I've got a little nub there that I'm going to fold down with my thumbnail or sometimes the tip of the scissors helps with that too. Oh, being picky, but there we go. Just make it a little bit more smooth. All right, now we have the lead on, silver bead. Now we're going to start the thread. This is Danville 140 in black. I'm just going to build up a little thread dam right behind the lead with tension to try and hold it in place. That way, once we get to where we've built up enough of a ramp, we can just kind of work right into the wraps, between the wraps of lead with the thread, get some of those thread wraps up into the glue as well, then work our way back to the bend of the hook. Next up, we're going to add some pine squirrels anchor strips in black. The micro size, standard size, both seem to work. It doesn't make a heck of a lot of difference. If you're tying really small, 14s or 12s, you might want the micro for 8s and 10s and 6s, probably the standard, but you can make all of them work. They don't, it doesn't vary that much. The micro would have a little bit thinner cut to it, but not much. Next up, we're going to tie in some of this zonker strip, some of this squirrel zonker, and I'm going to tie it in upside down so the hide is facing up. So I've got kind of the hide trapped right behind where my thread dam is behind the lead wire. I'm going to capture it with the thread and with tension wrap it down. One trick, just like you may have remembered from the olive poacher, to keep this longer tail from fouling is to wrap down the bend of the hook just a tiny bit. It looks a little goofy in the vise and in the box, but it makes it so that, that tail doesn't foul as often. All right, we've got our tail in place. Remember, the fly is going to fish this way with the hook point up. So I want the fur on the bend of the hook side and the skin on the shank of the hook side, if that makes sense. Next, we're gonna add a little bit of flash to the tail. We've got Ripple Ice Dub here in Northern Lights. It's a really cool kind of black color that's got different highlights to it. I don't want very much of this, so I'm just gonna pull just a small pinch out here. Not very much, just a few strands. I'm gonna collect it in my fingers. And it's a little bit unruly. It's really designed to be dubbing. I like it because it's sparse. And all I'm going to do is just capture it with the thread somewhere in the middle of it, like so. And then I'm going to fold it back and tie it right back down against the bottom of the tail. Then any of these really long fibers, I'm going to trim away with the scissors to make it look just like that. It's just got a hint of flash, not too much of it. Next up, we're going to use my favorite Don Foe Dubbing Twister, the Roto Dubbing Elite, they call this one. This has a Y shape with two little hooks on it, so I'm going to take the hooks and connect them to the thread, like so. Create a loop. Then I'm going to close off the loop here. And move the thread right up behind the bead. I'm going to throw a half hitch in. Use our bobbin cradle. And now we're gonna add some semi-seal. MFC recently bought Romer's semi-seal, so all the new packaging stuff starting to come in. This particular color is called Black Magic. 
any black semi seal would work. This has just a hint of flash to it as well, one I really like. And we're just going to grab a bit of this. We do need a fair bit of it because we're going to make a dubbing loop with it. So we're going to go through a bit of this material, just grabbing pinches of it at a time, sticking it in the dubbing loop, another pinch, straight in, another pinch, straight in, maybe one more. That looks about right. Now you can kind of see I've got the dubbing loop there to the side. Now all I have to do is hold the tool tight, spin it up into a nice tight rope. Then we're going to grab the Stanfo Velcro comb combo tool and just tease those fibers out. This is 140 thread, so you can put a fair bit of tension on that without worrying about breaking it. Next, I'm just going to stroke some of those fibers back and start wrapping my body up the shank right up to the bead, keeping lots of tension on that. Lots of tension on the thread, that way it won't come undone. Then I'll capture that thread loop with my tying thread, tie it off, get rid of the excess. Then we still have our dubbing in place. I'm going to use that same Velcro tool. I'm going to tease all the fibers to the top, reaching in there between that hook point and the shank to tease all those fibers. You can really rough this thing up if you want, get all those fibers out. I want them combed upward mostly. That way I can then trim them to shape like this. I'm going to cut at an angle down this direction. So we're going to create a bit more bulk at the head and a bit less bulk towards the tail by trimming kind of an angle cut like that. Then we'll get the brush tool and tease it back out to the sides. That way we have kind of the appearance, the silhouette of a larger head on the fly, but not a ton of bulk just because it's dubbing. It's not wrapped with rabbit or squirrel or anything that's very dense, just a, a thin dubbing. All right, next up we're going to take a black saddle. This is a hen saddle. Hard to see in the macro lens there, but just a black, natural black, dyed black, doesn't really matter. Um, it just needs to be large enough to create a bit of a hackle in the front. And I'm going to take the feather here, pinch the very top of it, stroke the fibers downward to create a little tie-in spot. Then I'm going to trim the very tip of it, leaving just that little notch so I can tie that in. I like tying it in this way so that I can hold on to the butt of the feather, which is kind of the waist part of the feather. Tie that in with plenty of tension. Then we're just going to wrap this around a couple of times. I'm really not too concerned with laying all those perfectly backward because I'm going to lay them backward with a thread and a bit of dubbing. We're going to go around twice, capture with the thread, put a bit of tension on it. We're going to clip away the excess like so. Now is the part where I can kind of force those fibers that don't want to go back to lay back by stroking them back with my fingers and also forcing them back with the thread. Then what we're going to do is take the very bottom of this and we're going to trim this hackle away to keep the bottom nice and sparse. On the olive version I do this for uh, the appearance of fins, of pectoral fins. On this version, I just do it out of habit. You could probably leave that there, but I don't like the bulk on the bottom, so I usually trim it away anyway, even though this one I think is probably a better imitation of a leech than a sculpin. I've never seen a black sculpin, but this color combo works really, really well. The last step is just to get a little bit of the dubbing that we trimmed away while we made that dubbing cut and just add a little bit of it to the thread to cover up those last few tying wraps, kind of clean up our head a tiny bit. And also we can use this dubbing to force some of those hackles backward. So it doesn't take very much of it. Just a couple of wraps. The last step is to whip finish. Forcing any lingering fibers back with the thread. Pull nice and tight. Add your favorite head cement. I often take this tool and comb those fibers back one more time. But that is it. The black poacher 
Fish is great. There's something about the contrast from the silver bead to the black body. This is in my favorite color combo with that Northern Lights dubbing in there as the tail and then a flash in the tail. A little bit of squirrel, a little bit of hen, lots of movement, not too much bulk, very heavy for its size, sinks quickly. You can strip this one, you can jig it on a Euro rig. Uh, we even have customers that fish it below an indicator on still water. Very productive fly, easy to tie. Give it a try.